Yeah. Um, there's Apple and Base One and yeah, well, there Desiree it is. Um, Apple, that's that's us. And the Desiree Alliance is an alliance of U.S. groups primarily, which are organized of sex workers to fight for decriminalization of prostitution. Mm -hmm. So it includes groups such as um, Pony, I believe, which Pony stands for Prostitutes okay. of New York, um, Coyote. and Coyote, which is an older group from from the 80s, uh, Base One, which is the Bay Area, area sex workers. Um, education pro uh, network or outreach network. There are a lot of them that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all basically looking at Thanks. the same thing. All of us see that there are problems that a lot of people in the sex industry face. Mm -hmm. A lot of issues are deal with, you know, from the people who are fighting against prostitution, they're, mm -hmm. they're focusing on, you know, pimps and the abuse that pimps have with their mm -hmm. sex workers. And the, again, the street prostitution, which is the most visible side, side of prostitution, mm -hmm. is what gets about 90% of the discussion. And but unfortunately, like, a lot of people see the most abusive situations and they generalize them yeah. without any evidence. Again, it's like, evidence is not, does not support the generalization of this person's problem to all these other people. You it's don't like know if anything. MAD was like, well, we shouldn't serve alcohol anywhere in the world because th somebody is going to kill somebody with their car. Right. <laughs> so no alcohol for nobody. Right. So right. all right, it's an over it's overkill. It's like if you look at and and again the other the other problem is that the very word pimp is not defined. Mm -hmm. And so they have you have in your mind the word pimp or the word trafficker as this very extreme abusive case mm -hmm. that's been described to you, but the people who are pushing the advocacy, they kind of slyly shift the definition so that they're actually referring to a whole bunch of people as pimps who mm -hmm. you wouldn't consider to be abusive. For example, if on promoting prostitution in the third degree in Hawaii, which is a misdemeanor rather than a felony, if a prostitute gives you a kickback for sending them business, if you're mm -hmm. like a cab driver and you, somebody says, "Oh, and you take where them should to I this, go?" You know, and you give them twenty dollars. Well, that's promoting prostitution, but you're certainly not the same thing as a pimp who's controlling women. A scary black It's man. a very, very different, <laughs> different situation. Um, so when you use the word pimp, you got to be be careful of how these words are being used. These words have been used to describe us. Mm -hmm. People that you know, you saw these graphic on the screens. How leaders from these group, from these groups who are sex workers, mm -hmm. who've courageously stuck their neck out, risking arrest and risking shame, are being described as pimps by radical feminists. Mm -hmm. You know, they're pimps because they're pimping themselves. You know, and so this is part of this pimp. It's like idiocy. Mm -hmm. The number of just, if you don't probably, agree with us, then yeah. there are probably ten or fifteen percent of people working in the sex industry who do street work. Okay. And street work is where you're going to find pimps. But street work, a lot of street work is not done by people who are pimps. A lot is done by transgendered people yeah, who aren't We don't pimped. have pimps. <laughs> I never a lot gave is anybody done by, my money. Um, which you'd, you'd say as a, someone like a crack whore. Mm -hmm. A person who has a very heavy drug habit, doesn't make enough money, mm -hmm. you know, from her sex work to, to make a pimp interested in what she's doing. She's oh, not okay. taking care of herself. Mm -hmm. She's tricking for low amounts of money. Pimps are interested in girls who are going to bring in the money. I you know, see. they want to keep a certain standard of attractiveness mm -hmm. and get out there, get in the money. If you're if you're so strung out, you slept in Ayala Park, your chances are you don't have pimps. <laughs> so the, you know, the number of women, the number of prostitutes who have pimps, as as we think of the term, is probably about eight percent. Eight percent. Yeah. And the rest, well, if they're not on the street, then where do you think they are? Online. Well, internet is very big now. Uh -huh. It used to be, you know, they had all these personal ads, and now we have the internet. Mm -hmm. And the internet is very good because it's really. Um, gotten a lot of girls the ability to work independently who used to work through an escort service mm -hmm. where there'd be a split. Now you're working independently where you're taking all the money. You keep your own money, you make keep your, your own, own money, right. Yeah. Now, um, there's been some suggestion that pimps are now getting their women onto the internet. Okay. And some of the girls on the internet may be in an abusive situation. But um, there's no evidence that there are any more pimps or more girls who are pimps. So if their girls are on the internet, they're also mm -hmm. the same girls who are on the street. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there are more pimped girls or more abuse. It just means the same girls are doing more things. Can I read a quote from Swap USA, the Please. Sex Workers Outreach Project? This is uh, Stacy Swan. She was talking about when Craigslist sort of forcibly shut down their adult services thing. How dare they? And she, yeah, that was her last <laughs> thing was from Craigslist. It's cute, too. I'm not allowed hey. to say that, though. Regardless of how many free speech sites we're going to try to shut down to stop prostitution, you're not doing anything to solve the real problems and issues facing people working in the sex industry, separately from people who are forced into sexual situations that they don't want. 
You're not serving either of these two groups of people. And actually hearing them and acknowledging that they both exist and have different issues will produce more results than just this campaign so people can get their face in the paper. We know Craigslist. Craigslist is a friend. Oh, uh, really? Yes, absolutely. Craigslist is absolutely <laughs> a friend to all who want to have free speech. Cool. We've, Craigslist has not issued a statement indicating why they've acted or if it's permanent. So okay. I don't think it's appropriate to draw, draw any conclusions oh. on that. Sorry. Um, but, you know, the people who are attacking Craigslist, you know, are not people who I feel are particularly credible. And, um, again, names? we can spend a lot okay. of time going through, the, the, again, the issue of evidence mm -hmm. and evidence of abuse and how it's mistreated by the people who are fighting this anti-prostitution crusade in the United States. Uh, we have lots of what's purported to be scholastic research of academic quality, which, you know, doesn't have basic, basic things like controls, how people were interviewed, what the questions were, and they'll, you know, they've quoted other research, taken things out of context, which supports their point of view, which would not have been, you could never support if you'd read the whole research, things of this nature. Um, there's a very big problem with the quality of the discussion. Um, Obviously, the, there are people who are abused, and we need to do something about it. Mm -hmm. and, we, and, and talking about sex workers' rights, we don't ever want to ignore that. But the things which we need to do are not the things which are being, you know, ballyhooed. The things which are ballyhooed are, are cracking down on uh, anyone who does business with a prostitute in, in, a, in a managerial cons situation. Um, in the bill that was issued in our legislature, Senate Bill 2045 in the last session, they included people running a strip club as traffickers. Strippers are now prostituted people, according to this bill. Um, stripper club operating is, prost is, is, is part of prostitution. And there are 20-year sentences being handed out to people. And they've included, in the term where you're talking about force, force, fraud, and a third thing, enticement. Uh. Okay, well, what exactly is enticement to do something? You, want to lick that you offer someone money, <laughs> that's enticement. So in the, in the mindset of these uh, radical feminist groups, Offering someone money to engage in some kind of sexual thing or enticing them in some way is equivalent to forcing them. It's the same thing, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's right in Senate Bill 2045, the CD1 that was passed in our legislature and vetoed by our governor. But then the way that is the bill worded so that they would probably just punish all majority men involved and not the woman who is a sex worker? Well, it's worded so that it, it doesn't apply if, if you're you were operating as a sex worker and you did some of these same things. Mm -hmm. If you weren't operating as a sex worker, if you're only operating in a situation where you're managing or supervising, then you become, you know, the tra a trafficker. But the problem is, again, they've gotten rid of the need to show that the trafficker engaged in an abusive thing that most people would recognize as abuse. But They're operating on the radical feminist thing that all s commercial sex is inherently abusive. Because all men are like that. Yeah. And all women are victims. I mean, if you read read the literature, if you read, you know, the radical feminist things, you, you learn that, you know, any kind of sexual penetration is a form of abuse. That's why lesbianism is okay, because it's right, not real right. sex. So, I mean, you get from, from that philosophy, this whole, this idea develops. The things that need to be done for, for, for women who are victimized. Seconds. Okay. Um, you need to have protection when they testify against the people who are, who are abusing them. And you need to be careful about doing other things which make things more dangerously, like going after their johns. If you go after the, the johns, what you're doing is you're making it more difficult for them to meet their quota with their pimp. If they get a drug addict, they turn to stealing. It's a bad idea. Bad. Hookers rule, you guys. Work it out. AppleHawaii.org. Thanks, Tracy. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>